background noise because I have my windows open. It's beautiful today. Welcome, 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 and good morning or good afternoon or good evening, good day, wherever you happen to be in this beautiful and messy world. I am Carol C.C. Miller, your positive life strategist, peace activator, and global hugger, coming to you with another Embrace Your Life chat, where the intention is to heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows through a positive focus. As you can see, I have my annual, annual, my monthly visitor here with me, and I will introduce her in a moment. Today's topic, I don't really need to go over my house cleaning tips as much, but I still like to put them out there. One is I'm not an absolutist. I'm not a big fan of the words always, never, right, wrong, good, or bad. There are 7 billion people on this planet. I can't begin to say what is always right for 7 billion people. So I personally work on the majority of the time. Zero being always negative, 100 being always positive. I don't know anybody at zero, and I don't know anybody at 100. I know people are closer to both of those numbers. My work is to be in the 80 to 100% of the time, positive, loving, kind, compassionate, and peaceful. And I am that the majority of the time because of my daily practices. But it does mean frustration, fear, overwhelm, disappointment, um, all sorts of less than feelings do show up. And I feel what I need to feel, and I move forward to feeling a little bit better. Secondly, I'm a coach. I love supporting people in growing their life to what they want it to look like and live in. I am not a counselor, nor am I a therapist. And sometimes to live your best life, getting counseling or therapy is the best way to move forward to do that. I believe that you deserve to live your best life. So whether it's hiring me as a coach, working with a counselor, therapist, or whatever support team you want to build around you to live that best life, I encourage you to do so. Hey, Kathy. Hello, Michelle. Good to see you. And now we're going to get into today's topic, although it's not one necessarily about positivity. In some respects, it is because our pets are so important to us in our lives. And uh, I know, like, I've been petless for a few years now. But I know anytime my little Mika was feeling off, like it impacted me a lot. So I think knowing what's going on in our animal world is important. I've got um, Shauna Fisher here that she is an animal communicator. So if you have questions about your living pets or ones that have passed over, we'd like you to put their name. It's helpful if they're to know if they're living or um, gone, but it's not essential. And then whatever question you might have, and if Shauna could answer it, she certainly will. These are just short little um, interpretations she does or in intuitions that she does. You can hire her for 30, 45 minute sessions to go in deeper as well. But as we wait for some comments and questions, uh, Shauna and I were talking before, and I absolutely think this is so interesting and important. When we think about nu um, nuance, nuisance animals, and I know, um, like right now I live in, in the city of Chicago, so I don't have a lot of wildlife per se around me, except for maybe city rats, which knock on wood, I've not seen in my area, so let's hope they're not here. But like when I, my mom's house, which we sold a couple years ago, like it was in the woods and stuff. So there were a possum, there were raccoons, there, um, there were, I can't even think of the animal that did a lot of damage to her deck because it wanted to get in to get food. But what about, when people want to get rid of these animals that um, we think of as nuisances. Like I see it every now and then on, on Facebook, people will post about opossums and what they do for the environment and stuff, because let's, let's admit it, they're not the most attractive animal out there, but they have a purpose too. And I try to remind myself that in my own home, when I see a spider, like it has its purpose. Uh, and so to think about when we see things as nuisances, maybe to take a different look at that. So what's yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, to take a different look at it. And I love that we're talking about this. And it's good to take that different look. So example, like look at like what they do do for like the environment, right? We're all part of that like e collective ecosystem, right? right? And the animals, like the possums, they take care of this and they do that. Like they, I think they help with like a, if I'm remembering right, like ticks with I deer, so. right? I, I think they, tick, yeah. I think they help with something like that. And look at like the blessings that they bring in. Don't think of them as a nuisance. Think of like, hey, they're just being resourceful. I know people get upset with maybe raccoons going into the trash, but what we can do is we can kind of like flip that script 
gift and be in a place of gratitude and say, okay, like, why are we doing this? And then we can send them pictures with, with positivity and be like, okay, like, you know, here, I'll have this over here for you, you know, or imagine them going to another place that maybe is like a better place for you and a better place for them. Right. And send yeah. that positive energy instead of that nuisance energy. Because when we send that nuisance energy, what does that elevate? That elevates and activates more of that nuisance energy, right. bringing more of that. So we can, you know, the more love we send out, even if we're irritated, we can send out more of that love. And that can help amplify that. And when we come from a place of gratitude of like, hey, they're just doing this because they, they got to live too, right? And Right. And, yeah, they got to live too. And I'm one of those people that's just, what was it? A couple weeks ago, there was this big spider in my house. And I was like, okay. I was like, what am I going to do? Like with this, with this spider? I was like, okay. So I found, what was it? Like, I think this bag or something that I put this, I don't even remember what it was at the time. I found this thing to put the spider and I was like, okay, go in here, go in here. And it, it went in there. And then I went downstairs and, and took it outside, you know, cause I'm like, why kill it? Like there wasn't a reason to kill it. I'm like, I'm just going to take it outside. Now I do have to say if it was like a black widow or something like that, I might've been like, well, you know, that's a little bit different story, but you know, that's, that's just my take. Well, I and again, uh, I have friends who are like that. They're any sentient being they can't, but I, I joke with them because I am not a fan of spiders. If they're outside my home, they're fine. But <laughs> I joke with people. I'm like, no, no, no. They come in to my place because they are ready to go to the other side. So they are asking me for assistance to help them. There. <laughs> <laughs> so if a bug comes into my house, it's ready to go. And it's like, okay, I'm going to support you in your new journey and help you do that. <laughs> I'm going to support you in your journey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, we can, we can set that container too, to be like, okay, like you can hold that vision. Like, okay, the spiders, like if they go to your door, like I don't see them coming toward my door, they go the other way. Right. Like you can hold yeah, that vision yeah. and be I, like, they're, not coming there. they're going there. Unless they do want to cross the bridge. Right. There you yeah. go. My, on, right? uh, my sister is very much that a sentient being and won't do that kind of thing. So when anytime we're visiting each other, like I will put a jar over, I'm like, okay, you have to take care of it because it's gone if I'm the one taking care of this. So there you go. Right. Yeah. We all have our things. Right. And it's all about, you know, being not in judgment. Right. I feel like sometimes right. we're so much in judgment of things and we have to honor everybody's yeah. um, own path with things. And I'm doing an experiment today. I told my dogs that they could stay out during our live if they're if they're good. So we'll see if they're going to be if they're going to be good <laughs> and not crazy. But well, see, and that's a really good um, thought or question. And I think somebody here has a similar question. And we're going to get to the questions here in just a moment. But when you put that out and like you send that energy to your dogs, there's also often um, unconscious energy. It's like they're, they're never good during these things. They're not going to be good today. Like you think that you're giving them all this. So it's like when you're counter um, acting to what you're asking for, but in the back of your head. And I used to do this with Mika all the time. I'm like, oh, she's okay. She feels good. Mika, you're good. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, oh my God, what's going on with her? Do I need to call a vet? Blah, blah, blah. But so when we're putting out that mixed signals, that's when we tend to get into challenges that way. And when you were talking about the energy putting out there, it's true. Like if you're focused on the nuisance of the pet or the wildlife that is bothering you, you are feeding that energy rather than feeding the energy of what you want. So it's not about ignoring that raccoon. I cannot think of this animal. It looks like a beaver, but it doesn't have the flat tail. It looks uh, like a, an, not an otter or a, uh, it's not a beaver, so it wouldn't be. I'm just going through not a chipmunk, not a like possum, groundhog, maybe, oh, or something like oh, that. Nut a nutria, uh, that name doesn't sound familiar. So they kind of look like a oh gosh, what anyway? Is it? Huh. They have very powerful teeth, so they would gnaw on um, the wood. Woodchuck. Our, it was a woodchuck, yes. So, but we focus on what it was doing wrong rather than focusing on, I mean, we didn't do anything harmful to it. But it brought up the frustration, and I did not think in that moment to shift it into something different. So, 
I think yeah. it's a good example of anything when you're focused on what you don't want, still feel what you need to feel, but then move into that space of what you do want. So exactly. And it's so true. And that's, I love what you brought up about the unconscious thought with my animals. Cause I've been guilty of that. Yeah. And here I'm the professional, you know, sometimes I'll be like, okay, they're going to be good. But then I have that little bit of thought like, oh my God, no, they're always going to be like crate and ruckus. And then they're like, oh, yeah. we heard ruckus. So. Yeah, exactly. We, we didn't hear the be good part. We heard be good with ruckus part. It was like, okay. <laughs> Right. And I think that's one of the reasons I like to mention that at the beginning of any of my talks is the majority of the time, because coaching, I mean, I coach people on different things and I am not, I don't want anyone to think that I am the be all, know all, and that I too don't have those same situations kind of thing, but I'm aware of them. So I work on them. So, um, so I'm going to welcome people in and start answering, uh, asking these questions. So Kathy and Michelle are here, Roxanne. Jeff is here in Shamey. I hope uh, Shami or Shamey. I'm not sure which one that is, but welcome all of you. And if I do not see your comments, sometimes that happens on um, I use StreamYard. So if you're asking a question for Shauna and we don't get to it, please put it back in um, to remind us because sometimes they do get overlooked. But I'm going to go back in here. I believe, okay, Roxanne, Coco was 15 years old, crossed the Rainbow Bridge on on, the, on 125.21. Roxanne, do you have a specific, did I miss it? Did you have a specific question about Coco? Or you just wanted to know? So Roxanne, if you could share that, that would be awesome. And then I'm going to go to Michelle here. Shauna, can you please tell me why Kaya is so obsessed with food? I feed her three times a day and she acts like she's starving and meows like crazy. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you jumped to this one first because that was the one that was really coming to me. I heard <laughs> Kaya. Kaya's like, me, me, me. Don't see the other one. Kaya's like, me, me, me. And she says that that's her. She's like, focus on me. She's like, I like the focus attention on me. But she says with the food, she's like, hey, I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. I need um, I need food. I'm growing. I'm growing. And she's showing me she's like a Popeye the Sailor Man cat. And she's showing me like makes me think of like Popeye opening up spinach because she's like, I'm growing. I'm growing. I need more food and I need like big piles of food around all the time so I can I can I can have food. And she's showing me she likes like a big serving of like wet food. She's like a big clump of food. She's like, give me big clumps of food. So she's like, you can feed me four or five times a day. She's like, I'm a growing kitty. I need more food. So she's like, more is always better. She's like, more is always better. She says, more is always better. So, so Michelle, you have to let us know um, your thoughts on that one. Um, Jeff, when I tell my dog Rocco and cat, wait, let me see. When I tell my dog Rocco and cats, I love you, do they understand? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. They understand all of that. And they even understand the things that we don't say. So if we're having a moment, and I'm going to admit this being the professional animal communicator that I am, I love all my like, animals, but sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are driving me nuts, right? And they pick up on that and they know yeah. that. Because sometimes I'm like, I like you, I love you guys, but right now I'm just like, ugh. So they pick up on all that and they love it when we tell them uh, that we love them. And they actually like love it when we speak it out loud. Like I do that all the time with my animals. I'm like, I love you. And I tell them I love them individually and they, and they love that so much. Yeah. And I think they pick up on the energy behind it too. So. <laughs> Like, especially like what you're talking about, even if we're unconsciously worried about our animals or maybe even consciously worried, but not speaking it, or we're consciously frustrated, but not speaking it, they pick up on that energy too. So they totally do. And sometimes it's a moment for us to look at what's going on in our internal world and maybe to look at where we're frustrated too. Um, because sometimes what happens is the animals mirror things that are going on with us and they yeah. want to help to amplify and bring things up that we need to look at that maybe we're not looking at. They remind us to look at those things. That makes me think of the book that you just wrote. I wish I could remember the name of it, but um, you talk about things like that about oh, so many. You, mean, you mean this book sorry as i go over here you, this this yes book, your soulmate dog book yeah yes. we talk about those kinds of experiences of what 
your dog did Luna and then the learning for you through that experience. So it's, it's really powerful to be able to take a step back like we see behavior of an animal and just assume it's that behavior. But if you take a step back and see what's going on in your life around them and stuff, I think you can um, bring in a little bit more compassion to it too. So exactly. Absolutely. Um, oh, so Roxanne wanted to know, did Coco, who is 15 years, reunite with her son? I did a big yes, and I see a circle, and I'm looking at the ring light that I have above me that I always forget to turn on when I do lives, mind you. <laughs> but I have it right there. So, um, is I get a big yes, and it's like a circle with a heart, as I just want to say like this, like they're circled around each other, and they're like right at each other's side. They're like right there, like glued together. They're like they're they're in sync and they're there and they're watching out over you and they give me an image of kind of like a, a like a like a lake and water like kind of like sitting on a ramp that they're that they want you to have some reflection time at the water at sunset oh at sunset at sunset yes yeah, sunset oh my goodness yes sunset. yes i'm glad it was sunset because sunrise if that was the message for me i'm like nope mika come up with something else sunrise is too early Right, exactly. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so um, the, Michelle's just here. I don't know there's a specific question, but maybe you can tune into the house there. The lady next door passed away about eight years ago, and her house has been empty since then. The chimney is broke, and we think there are raccoons living inside. Oh, yes. The raccoons say we're not just living in the chimney. We're, like, living in the house. They're like, it's the house isn't empty. They're like, we're here. <laughs> so maybe you need to go next door and just ask them to politely leave and right. find their find new accommodations. Um, Kathy, I had to let go of our Raven 11 years ago. It devastated me. Nine months ago, I lost Raven's human daddy and my soulmate. Are they together now? Oh. Sending you so much love, Kathy. That's so oh. hard. I'm sending you so much love too. I just had like chills run down my back right here. And I get that they're both like sending you a big hug is I just want to go like this, that they're, they're sending you a big hug and they're just showing that the love is always there around you. And Raven is showing me that I was there to greet my to greet my dad. I was there to greet my daddy, and I was there and I was around during that time of his passing. And they're still like at your feet and holding that like grounded presence for you. So if you feel like kind of like your feet are like kind of being pushed on the ground, that they're right there like at your feet still, and they're just sending you like a, a big hug and, and love and they're together. And they say you can call in our presence together or separate that we're like always right there within earshot of each other and that we're, we're sending you so much love and I'm sending you so much love yeah, too. Kathy. Oh my goodness. Oh. I think it's um, death is, is just like the grieving process. It just shows you how much love yeah. is there to begin with. So not that it's easy and i don't uh, i personally don't believe you get over it i think you learn to move forward with it and um, when you lose somebody or even uh, your when you lose someone or of importance um you're a different person when my mom passed away i was a different person so you just learn how to move forward from there so kathy sending you so much love on this and yeah, it's um, so hard. nine months you're, yeah, nine you're months. still in the thick of the grieving. Yeah. It will it will shift. And Kathy, you you join me um, quite often for the live, so you might have heard this, but I'm going to share it anyway. I heard this probably right after my mom passed away. It was, and I would love to give the name of the person who said it. I don't know it, and I've got a loud truck going by me right now. Um, but it's like grief is like a box, and you have this box, and there's a buzzer on one corner of the the box and that's your pain button and when grief is fresh which nine months i mean not everyone but most people nine months it's still fairly fresh you're going to have a big ball in that box so anything is going to hit that pain button and hit that pain button and hit that pain button as time goes on the ball inside that box shrinks so it's still there the pain is still there but the ball isn't hitting that button as much 
and all of a sudden three years down five years down 12 years down that small now it's like a ping pong size ball hits that pain button and puts you right back in that it's a recent loss so that's why i'm like grief isn't um shameful for sure it's, it's everyone has their own journey on how to move through it but it really is for me it's about moving forward with it not moving away from it because i don't know that it's ever going to completely go away but it won't have the stranglehold over you as it does when it's still fresh exactly i love that analogy i always try to repeat that analogy and i never can say it as beautifully as you and i always like to remind people too that there's no time limit on grief and then there's no rules on grief right it's, right. it's we deal with it in our own way and it's i definitely believe it's always a part of us and how i like to tell people it's like that connection you know as humans we can feel that connection and see that connection with our loved ones when they're right in front of us but when they pass it's like they step into a different plane of existence as we see them and feel them with our heart's eye so it's that heart to heart connection it's one we feel with our heart that we don't really see with our eyes here we see with our right. heart's eye is how I like to tell people. I remember, I mean, I heard it from Wayne Dyer. It could have been said, who knows by, but he's like, um, death is just like them moving into the next room. So they're yeah. still right there, but they're, so you can't see them because they're in the next room, but yeah. they are still right there with you. So I hope that helps Kathy. And again, yeah. we're sending you so much love. Mm -hmm. So much love. Michelle, I'll feed her a nice portion of food. She will scarf it down and then cry for more. Yeah, because she's like, she says, just remind me that I'm always going to have more and more. And she's like, you can slide in extra and give me like some extra crunchies and extra stuff to munch on. She's like, even more than you already do. She's like, I just love it. And she says, distract me with like a fun twirly thing, like one of those, uh, oh gosh, those like kind of lure cat toys, or maybe it has a feather or ribbons or something on the end. She's like, distract me away from it because she's like then i'll be like oh okay like maybe then i won't cry as much but she's so excited to be with you and she loves it and she's like oh i love to eat she's like i'm <laughs> so good she's like she makes me hungry it's like okay Kaya. <laughs> okay i just oh you're so very welcome roxanne and jeff it's like rocco the cats and i have a psychic bond and communicate that way too yes. i don't doubt that at all yes. and so Shauna, that's a question that I ask as far as, you know, people say that, you know, cats and dogs, their personalities are so different. Is there a difference in your connection or not even just you, but anybody's connection with dogs compared to cats? Or is it like people talk about, you know, dogs just want to please, 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 please. And cats are like, you please me. <laughs> so right. is, is there um, a different type of connection that we have with cats versus dogs? Or is it individual personalities i believe it's individual personalities um now i do have to say they all communicate in different ways and one thing that i found is for people that really want to communicate with animals i feel like one of the easiest animals to learn from is a horse and the reason why i say a horse is just because they have such presence and such groundedness that they're like very like clear 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 and concise with their messages where dogs and cats sometimes they can be maybe not as clear oh, and frenetic right. when you're first learning but horses are like bam right there interesting mm -hmm. okay and kathy says um i don't remember kathy your dog's name now all of a sudden Rock raven was boy these um you said what raven was now i've lost it I... australian shepherd i think yeah. is what those are beautiful dogs they are beautiful and um Sh shammy has checking my dog ricky is with my rottweiler um bauer uh, miss him very much so wondering about rocky oh rocky oh this is rocky and and brandy i'm thinking maybe i don't know like the, sometimes the comments go yeah i know it's hard too i'm so checking what, rocky is with her rottweiler bandy i think okay that's that's what i'm picking up too is like the, the image that i get is like yes we're together and i love these like the the synchronicity of all these messages today of like that those presences that were together are like together again. Like, I feel like that's really like significant and a really great reminder. But what I get is we're still like, 
like butting heads with each other. Like we're still here, like bouncing into each other and just kind of like that that's we're still bouncing here into each other. They're showing me like this boom, boom, like I'm still here. I'm still brushing up against you. Um, and that they just and that they miss you and love you so much too. And this is so weird. I've never like picked up this in a reading before, but they're showing me like this. They want you to like kind of like do some running or practice some boxing movements like boom, 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 boom. Like practice <laughs> some boxing movements, movement, movements. That could be even like Tai Chi or Qi Gong or something. They're showing me some movements with your arms like boom, boom, like knock out, knock out, knock out. So I don't know what that is, but I have to bring up everything that comes through because even if it sounds weird, to me usually those are the ones that are like oh my gosh that makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah like, exactly. that's, I just bring up everything that comes through and Roxanne should just share that her son has been gone for almost he passed 10 months ago um I didn't I was not aware of that Roxanne sending you so much love too oh, I so much love. Lo losing a child is, is a, a different level of grief um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. I've not studied him personally, so I can't um, tell you from personal experience how wonderful he is. But I've heard wonderful things about him. His name is David is it Kissel Kessler. I, I will look it up for you, Roxanne. But he worked with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and wrote um, a, the book on the five stages of grief. And then he wrote a sixth stage of grief, which is called Finding Meaning when he lost his 21 year old son. Um, I've not read any of those, but I, I know that he is considered one of the top leading authorities on dealing with grief. And you can find him on Facebook. Um, I, I'll look and see, cause I don't remember right now what his website is off hand, but he does have some great um, information. And when I did a talk probably a month ago about grief, I did uh, mention him and I shared the links then I should keep them handy because it's, um, you know, so many of us are dealing with grief in a variety of different ways and losing your son 10 months ago. I'm just sending you so much love. I cannot imagine yeah. what you're feeling right now. I can't imagine either. And so much love. And I feel like, you know, as a society, it's, it's refreshing to see that people are now starting to understand grief a little bit more. Yeah. And and realize that like yes like it takes time and it's like we i feel like the most important thing for grief is to remember to be gentle with ourselves right yeah. and you know and we might have good days we might have bad days but it's to remember to be gentle with ourselves right that's so it's like that's so important and yeah so well and i think it's twofold too i mean i think it's definitely um, our society and i'm talking about more of the u.s western culture um, funeral, get back to living, funeral, get back to living. But a lot of it is that's true. You know, we're a do, do, do society, but I think a lot of it also stems from we're uncomfortable talking about grief. Most people don't even know what to say. So they either say the wrong thing, meaning well, or they ignore the person who's in grief because they're afraid of saying the wrong thing. Right. So I think even if you're not in the midst of grief, learning how to move through it and how to talk about it and how to honor um, people's experience because one person may be in a different awareness of life that losing their child is not going to have i mean i can't imagine it not being a profound impact but they might be able to move forward a little quicker than someone else there is not a time frame on it each person's different. As a matter of fact, even in the family dynamic, um, my sisters and I were all very close to my mom and we've all experienced grief differently. So it really is about moving forward with the way that's going to support you. And I do very much encourage you um, to seek support, whether it's um, finding groups and you might need to shift and change different groups because um, sometimes groups get together to discuss the hardship of what's going on and not looking for moving forward. So I would encourage you, you know, maybe look at it. But I think his name is David Kessler. I am going to, after we get off this, go look for it and I will put it in comments because, um, again, I don't know him personally and I've not worked with his materials, but I've heard many, many good things about him from other people. So I am comfortable recommending him to all of you. So. You know what's so interesting, Carol? 
is I have this come through sometimes. And I know this is probably not going to be something you're not expecting. But what's really interesting, as you're talking about your sisters and the grief, like I had just an image of your mom pop into your pop into my head. And she's like, Carol, you were the one that listened the best. You're the best listener. <laughs> you're the best listener. She's like, You've always been the best listener and, and been good at that. So I don't know. I just feel like I had to bring that up. So she's like, you're the best listener. So thank you. Well, thank you. And now you're going to make me cry. So I know, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be that on your life. I feel like, yeah. So there you go. They're touching tears, not sad tears. So thank you. Jess, yeah. just curious. Why do my cats insist on sitting, sleeping on top of me like birds on a wire? Oh, my goodness. I totally just see them right there. And they're like, don't move. Don't move. They're like, don't move. They're like, don't move. They show me, like, don't move. They're like, when you move your head like this, that, they're like, no, 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 don't move. They said that they just want to, like, keep you warm and 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 keep you and keep you keep you safe. They're like, hey, stay. They're like, stay a while. Just like sit still a while. They want you to like sit still. And they said they're like your your balancing rocks. They said they help you to like get rebalanced in here. And what's really interesting, they're showing me as they sit there. There's like this like kind of like stick, and there's like a boulder on each side. And they're like, oh, okay, we got it. Like, okay, cool. We got it. Like all shifted. Now they, they say that they kind of like help shake things up and to help you to kind of like reset. They're like, hey, look, okay, he's balanced now. They said that it's like about like helping to keep you balanced is what they say. Okay. That is super interesting. But I have a question that Jeff isn't asking, but I'm going to ask. Oh, I love it. Um, let's say the cat sleeping on top of him and being that close drove him crazy it would drive me nuts because i am a tosser and turner when i sleep <laughs> what could he say think do to allow them to know i am i am safe thank you for protecting me but back off <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, i love that question so it's exactly that and it's just showing them, hey, like, I'm good. And just showing them where you want them to sleep. Be like, hey, this pillow right over here is, like, really comfortable. Like, sleep over here and showing them kind of, like, where you want them to sleep and reminding them, hey, I'm good. And give them that gratitude and thanks for, hey, thanks for looking out for me. And, uh, and show them that gratitude and show them like, hey, you can be right over here too. Because sometimes they're showing me that it's like, oh, wait, why is that hair right here? That sometimes they're showing me like it gets really awkward and they're like, we're sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the way they are and you're like, wait a minute. It's like, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just checking here. I don't, if, please, if there's other questions that we've missed, put them in comments. Again, I don't see anything that we've missed. Um, and again, oh. these, these, oh, did you see something? Shana? I see something all oh, from Kathy. It says my cat Kiki found me one month after Raven crossed the rainbow bridge. She was a stray that just appeared on my deck. She is always looking up and around. I wonder if she sees both Raven and her human daddy. Yes, because she's showing me this. They sent me here. I see them because they sent me here. They oh. sent me to you. It was like they so she's like i was just like whoop, drop down to to give you that comfort so oh that's beautiful and thank you for catching that because i I'm, I'm now seeing it but i had missed that it just reminds me and i shared this before so mika has been gone it'll be three years in september but she was a five pound four and a half pound dog and i told her like come back to me and i'm like oh wait a second with her personality She's going to come back as a darn St. Bernard that's a 130-pound dog. So I'm like, no, no, no. Maybe I don't want you to come back to me that way. But, yes, it's. That's what I keep. That's what I always see her as. And that she's like, she just showed me the St. Bernard again. And then she showed me, like, what about a Newfoundland yeah. or something like that? And it's like. She had a large personality for her tiny body. <laughs> it's like, Mika, you can still come back in a small dog and have a big personality. Yes. Please do that. That that would be fabulous. But I do not have the room or the stomach to handle big dog messes. Yeah. She just showed me a little chihuahua type dog. Okay. That would work. <laughs> yeah. That would be good because that's, yeah. Man. Jeff, he loves them all so very much. I'm so glad oh. you do. And it's um, thanks for being here, Jeff. I think this was the first time I've yeah. noticed you joining us. So um, please come back. Shauna is here the second Thursdays of the month. She also does Facebook Lives on her own page on Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Central Time. She lives out in the West Coast, so it's 7 p.m. 
Pacific time. And again, these are just short little readings. If you want something more in depth about your pet, she's able to help with missing pets, with pets that have crossed over. If there's a medical issue going on, um, she loves your pets almost as much as you love your pets. So you can go to her website, shawnamariefisher.com and schedule, is it 30, 45 minutes? And then... I'm sorry, do 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 90 minutes. But okay. who knows? Maybe I might add another option. You on don't there. need to add another option. Those three are just fine. Right. But you can go and get that um, schedule with her too. So she can do a little bit more in depth looking into your pets. And for those who of you have recently lost a pet or a family member, we are sending you so much love. I will be back Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 30. Don't know what my topic is this coming Tuesday, but it will be something to heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows through a positive focus. And Shauna will be back in a month. Maybe I'll have her just pop in another time and we'll talk another topic, which we'll probably come back to talking about animals too. But mm -hmm. um, thank you, Shauna, for being here. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy and I appreciate you and everyone who has joined us on the conversation today. Um, thank you very much. It was very nice sending you so much love of of the loss that you've experienced. And um, Shauna, closing thought for people, how, I, I know I know more on the human side, so I don't know if this um, translates on the pet side, but I know that when we're in deep grief, especially if it's just happened, we're in, uh, we're in a lower energy. It's not a right or wrong energy, but we are lower energy. So we don't necessarily pick up on the signs that our loved ones are here and they're showing us that they're around, but we're in that state of hurting so much that we can't see that. So it's generally when it starts lifting a little bit that you see the license plate of maybe your mom's name or something like that. How is that with pets? And do you have any suggestions on what to um, like ask for signs or what to look for so they know that their pet and their loved ones are just in the next room? I love that. That's such a great question. So there's so many ways it comes through. So sometimes it can be like you feel their presence still laying with you. Sometimes you can be like, oh gosh, I just heard that dog bark or that cat meow, or you just see them out of the corner of your eyes. Sometimes what's really cool is you might see another dog that reminds you of them or another cat. And sometimes their presence can be with that that present that it, you know, curse that animal at that moment, right? Sometimes they can be like that. It's kind of like a person that passed sometimes you maybe see a person that reminds you of them and it's like for that moment it's like it's that person it can happen that way with animals um sometimes it could be like in the clouds the other day i saw like an image of my luna in the clouds right um you know those other pets you see and also too with license plates luna i called her luna b so if i see like a license plate that has B in it, right? Or I see this truck that says Heartland Express that I only saw after she passed. And I see that all the time as a reminder she's with me. Sometimes it could be a song. And what, what I like to tell people is if you think about them right after, that's like a really clear way to know that that's a sign for them. If they just pop into your mind right afterwards, they'll be like, oh, like Luna's on my mind or Leo or whatever, you know, the pet's name, maybe you're Rosie or whatever it is. Know that that can be a sign from them. Sometimes it could be like a butterfly or a dragonfly or a flower that we see. There's so many different ways that we feel the signs and it's just to be open to those. And like, that's what I invite people to do is just to be open to those and know that they're there. And I, I just love these conversations every month. So thank you for having me on and thank you for everybody joining. So yeah, so just be open because realize sometimes the signs that are subtle are so subtle that we could just, whew, they can like fly right over us because we dismiss, dismiss them so easily. Cause it's like, Oh, that's just this, but it's like, yeah. oh, that's when it's like, oh, wow. It's like, it's, it's so, it's so strong. Like right, you know, right after that sometimes. So just yeah. Remember. I was going to bring that up, the dismissal part, because I think it's very easy for us. Like we want to see and we want to know. So if it's not something that we can um, prove that it's true, we dismiss it. It's like, oh, that was just, you know, a thought that went in or I'm sad right now thinking about my dog or my loved one, and that's why it happened. So I encourage you to be open 
to that. It made me think of um, back in college, I, I studied psychology and journalism and communications, but I had a teacher who was a nun and Sister D'Souza was her name. And somebody asked like, do you believe in heaven? And she's like, well, it's Sister D'Souza. So pretty sure she does. But she's like, yes, I do. And why not? Because if it's not true, it's not hurting me to have that belief. So even if the sign, if you don't see it as a sign, like it doesn't hurt to feel it as a sign. It probably is a sign regardless, but the more that we believe and um, talk to them, like just, just from today on, I encourage you to consider, as you know, if you've been with me, I'm not telling anybody what to do. I invite people to do and try different things, but I encourage you to consider seeing your loved ones, your pets, your sons, your soulmates are just in the other room. And so they're that close to you. You walk into that other room. Well, guess what? Now they're in the other room. So you can't physically see them, but their essence is there. Their energy is there and they are listening to you. So um, yes. I think one of the things, and again, I have zero idea of knowledge of this, but I think that they drop um, the fear. And so it's not like they're sad that they miss you because they're still with you. So they're, they're not in mourning for their loss. We're in mourning. The people who are left behind are the ones who have to learn to live in a new way. So um, exactly. I'm now stepping off my grief soapbox and back into no, it. It's, it's so true, though. It's so true. And it's so important. And sometimes, you know, we might, he, you know, see or come across somebody that has the same name. So I have my friend Joshua that passed away in December, right? And so sometimes I might see somebody that has that name. And there was that Josh line that came out like right after he passed. And then there's a certain song that he sends me. And it's like, I know that it's him because I think about him when I hear that song, right? I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. and it's like, and then, and the song used to annoy me and now I love it. Cause I'm like, okay, I know that's <laughs> it's him. You know? So it's he like you probably yeah. chose a song that annoyed you just to do that too. <laughs> right, exactly. And that was like his humor too, right? And he used yeah. to, he sends like his family members eagles. And he's never sent me like an eagle like the the bird eagle, but I've seen like an eagle figurine, like a eagle statue, yeah. an eagle on a license plate, right? So there's those other ways they can come through too, right? There's so many different ways. Yeah, and I think it's important too to even like when you're thinking about seeing the license plate. I don't go around driving looking at license plates, like <laughs> not, not what I do. But every now and then, one draws my attention, and it's like, oh, it's a message for whatever reason. But it's not like I'm like looking, like let me look at every license plate to find a message for mom, because I I just don't do that. So really be. Um, gentle with yourself to see when those type of messages come um oh wait, nancy hi shauna heading to get oh your your big boy bubs soon so he's just in for a shot so hopefully oh. those go well because that's when i decided i'm a better aunt than a mom because i hated taking me to the vet because i didn't want her to um be hurting but you know what moms, right. have, to do. moms have to take them to the vet so it's totally understandable Okay, well, I, I think we have um, covered the topic today. I don't think we missed any questions. Yeah, this was so fun today. I always love this. This is like oh, literally too. my favorite Thursday of the month. Yay, so. I love it too. And she is on Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Pacific time, Pacific, 9 p.m. Chicago time does th this type of thing without me. I don't know how she does it without me, but she I does. don't know either, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm in comments being her Vanna and putting yes. links in for her. But um, yeah, so you can get some more um, wisdom from Shauna on Sunday nights or go to her website to sign up to get a more in-depth um, conversation about your beloved pets. Hello, Christopher. Welcome for joining us I'm from Canada. So we are going to love and leave you. And again, sending so much love to all of you who have recently or not even recently dealing with the loss of someone or a pet. Can you call us someone? I think of someone as a pet too. But anyway, I, someone I or a pet that has yes. passed that you are missing, sending you lots of love and knowing 
that they are right there with you, um, possibly laughing at you and possibly just sharing a big hug with you. So take care. Um, thank you again, Shauna. I will be back on Tuesday. Not sure of the topic, but it will be something to heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows. And until then, remember you matter. You matter to me. You matter to the world. And most, most, most importantly, you matter to you. So we'll talk soon, Tuesday of this coming week. So bye-bye for now.